Hello, English learners. Welcome back to the English with Michael YouTube channel. I, of course, am Michael, and today we're going outside. So I made a video last month about cooking, where we looked at some common English words that you can use when you're cooking, and I got a lot of really good feedback from that. So it seemed like many people enjoyed it and found it useful. So today I wanted to do something similar. So we're going outside and we're going to do a bit of gardening. Now the past few weeks in England have been so sunny, so beautiful. Ironically, today is the first day the cloud has come back. So it's a little bit cold, a little bit gloomy outside. But I was still able to go outside and get some nice videos and to show you some basic things you can do in the garden while using English. So if you like to work in the garden, you like nature, and you want to improve your English at the same time, then this might be a good video for you. So I'm going to cut to that video now. There'll be my voiceover as well. And I really hope it's something that is useful for you. So as I first came out into the garden, I noticed this bee. He was trying to collect some pollen and he was having some trouble. And I think the reason why is because this flower bud, so we call it a bud, which is the beginning of a flower, the bud has not yet opened. Another word for open is bloom. The flower has not yet bloomed. It's still a bud. So it's just about to bloom any day now, but it's a little bit too early. So this bee is trying to collect his pollen and he's having some difficulty. Over next to that busy bee, we can see some roses here, some white rose flowers. And now the thing with roses that's really important is to keep deadheading them. So this is a verb to deadhead. And what this means is when you basically cut the flowers off when they are starting to die. And one of the main reasons to deadhead is simply just to keep flowers going for longer, longer throughout the growing season. So you can see on the floor here all of the previous flowers that were cut off. Now I want to show you my special area of the garden which I've just started last week. You can see perhaps even hundreds of seedlings in this pot here. And I'm very excited about this. It only took three days for them to emerge. Emerge means to appear or come up. Now this pot, these are my salad seedlings. So I think it was last Wednesday when I sowed these seeds. So to sow means to put the seeds in the earth. But of course, in order to keep the seeds healthy and to make sure they grow, you have to make sure the soil, the earth, is kept wet. So we've got a watering can here, and I watered the seeds whenever they looked dry. In the other pot down here, you can see some tiny, tiny seedlings. So when you plant the seeds, they will sprout. And that means when the plant starts to come out of the seed. When it sprouts, this is called a seedling. Seedling. So you've got some tiny little seedlings popping up through the earth here. And these are my basil plants. So basil is a herb, um, very often used in like pasta sauce. So that's what I hope to use it for. But it's very exciting to see all of these here. What I may have to do in the future is thin them out, thin them out. And this means if there are too many plants close together, they will kind of be fighting for light, fighting for nutrients in the soil. So you have to kind of pull some of them out to allow them to be healthy, to allow the ones remaining to be stronger. I also have some cucumber seeds planted. They have not sprouted yet. This here is a melon plant, a melon. And you can see it's got one flower at the moment. And plants like melons and pumpkins and 
things like that. They like to creep across the floor and they will sprawl out across the floor if you let them grow naturally. So to sprawl out is to kind of go out and cover a large area. This plant is very popular, especially in the UK. This is called lavender and it smells really nice, lavender. It's very popular with bees, but these ones are quite special because these are ones that my mum grew from cuttings. So this word cutting is a noun and it's called a cutting because it comes from a cut piece of lavender. So in order to make a cutting, I'll show you an example, but if you cut a piece of a plant like this, you remove the maybe the lowest leaves, like the bottom few centimeters of leaves, plant it in the soil, then it has a very good chance of growing and becoming its own independent plant. That's a really nice way to get some plants for yourself from existing plants. In the corner here, we also have many pots containing some beautiful, colorful flowers. And when we have a place for them, these are going to be planted out into the garden. It's a very simple phrasal verb to plant out is when we talk about taking a plant from a pot into the garden. So they will be planted out some point soon. Going into the shed. So the shed is the kind of garden building that some people have where you would keep your tools and things like that. I have found these garden tools for cutting. These are called secateurs, secateurs. And they're used for cutting plants, as you can see, although they're a little bit old and rusty. This very messy plant is my goji berry plant, goji berries. So I've got a huge goji berry plant now. they will be ready to harvest in the summer. So to harvest means to collect the fruit or vegetables from a plant, but it's getting a little bit out of control. So it needs to be pruned. So to prune a plant is to kind of cut things back, maybe to make it tidy, to reduce the chance of it getting a disease, to prune a plant. So you can see me here, I'm cutting off some of the ends. Another tool that's very important for gardening and inside the house is a broom. So this is a broom and it is used for sweeping. So very important to keep the paths swept, keep them clean. So here I am sweeping the paths with one hand, filming with the other hand, not the easiest thing. In this clip, you can see a tiny plant. It's like a type of grass, I believe, in a pot. And one word we can learn here is the phrase to pot up, pot up. This is another gardening phrasal verb. Sometimes it's not, not necessary, but with many plants, you have to kind of gradually make the pot bigger to accommodate for the roots. The roots of the bottom part of the plant, we'll come to that later. And now we can move on to weeds, weeds. So a weed is simply an unwanted plant growing in the garden. I would generally prefer the simple old fashioned way of just pulling them up. I think it's the most enjoyable and environmentally friendly too. So we could use this tool, perhaps a fork, or we could use this tool, which is probably a bit easier, this is called a trowel, trowel. It's a bit of a hard one to pronounce. And you can just simply remove the weed with the trowel, but you must make sure you remove the root as well, because some plants can still regrow if the root is kept in the ground. So if you look at this plant here, you can see the green part is the plant above ground. The white part at the bottom, that is called the root the root. Another tool that is very useful is this scraper. It's especially useful for patios. So what I am walking on at the moment, this is a patio, which is like a stone area where you can sit or relax or walk. And weeds often grow in the gaps in the patio. So here you can see 
I'm scraping the weeds out of the patio and it's quite a nice simple way to do that. Keep it looking clean. In this clip here you can see a flower bed, a flower bed. Now bed is a word in gardening used to describe an area that's designated for plants and it has a lot of tree bark around it. Tree bark. So bark is the word for the outside part of a tree and this is put on the bed to be used as mulch. Mulch. Now mulch is a way to stop the weeds growing underneath and depending on your opinion it can make the garden just look a bit nicer a bit tidier but since there is a cat that lives here he likes to dig in the mulch a lot so it gets quite messy. So when it does become messy you can use this tool which is called a rake and the verb is the same. So you can rake the mulch back again trying with one hand and trying to make it look a little bit neater and tidier. So I think that's about enough gardening for one day. If you like these kind of videos feel free to let me know and I can try and film more in the future especially on a sunny day and if you show me some support show me you like it I'll be more than happy to do my best to make more kind of real life videos so you can learn English in a more useful way you know not textbook English but the kind of English that you need in your day-to-day -day life. Thank you very much for watching this video on gardening with English. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think and I will see you next time. Bye bye.